So as everybody can see in the chat box, there are a few links which I have pasted just now. Okay, so there is a syllabus link wherein you can check your course syllabus. There is a payment link wherein you can just make your payment and you can join in this course. If you want to share your feedback related to your course or anything, you are feel free to go ahead to fill this form. All best details you can check on this link in case you have any further query related to your course or any other examination related to Lumpyard. So you are free, free to drop your email on this email ID, which is port at the rate of success.com, or you can drop us on a WhatsApp message also on these two numbers. Okay. So see, we'll be on live on uh, Facebook today. So in case you got some network glitch or something like you got to exit from this patch, so you can join us on Facebook. also. Okay. So not taking much time. So I'll invite Usha Ma'am to just give a brief introduction about herself. Okay, thank you so much, Pooja. Hello, everybody. And it's so good to see returning students. So I can see many students who have already done classes with me coming back. So my name is Dr. Usha Banerjee. I have a PhD in computer science. And I'm involved in academics since almost now, almost more than 20 years. And uh, with Olympiad success, it's been uh, a long time now. And as I told you, I have had, I have batches, I have taken students in class six. They are with me till class 10. In fact, I have many students like that, even in the previous batches of class 10. And today also I see some familiar faces. It's great to see returning students back. And now all of you are in class eight, grade eight, which is like the threshold of your senior school, right? So from eight onwards, actually the differentiation of physics, chemistry and uh, biology actually starts. So eight is a crucial year where the more important concepts of physics and chemistry are really taught. So it's for science, it's very important to understand. Okay, it's very, very important to understand and then study. If you just learn it up, it will not work. In class eight, you will also have numerical questions, which I feel requires more understanding. And that's the reason I'm here. I focus on explaining the concepts and, you know, taking questions from real life problems because ultimately what you're doing is we're solving real life problems. Okay, so that is my focus area on explaining the topics, explaining the concepts, and hoping that you understand and then you can solve any question that comes. And actually grade eight, as I told, is a preparation for your ninth and then your 10th. All of you will, you know, appear in some board exam. So this is like the foundation year, right? And unfortunately today for the demo session, we are on mute. But for the real classes, you know, students who have been there with me, I can see some faces who are already there with me. They know my classes are very interactive and I don't have any restrictions of keeping yourself on mute or, you know, you know, annotating on the screen, everything is allowed. Okay, so I look forward to the demo and also the actual classes, right? Thank you, Pooja. Thank you so much, Usha ma'am. So we are good to go to have a look to our PPT. Let me share a short PPT with you. Hope my screen is visible to everybody. Yeah. Okay, so as you know that we are attending a demo of grade science, a grade eight science. Just a moment. Okay, Olympiad Success is a plat India's largest plat platform for online preparation Olympiad classes with eight courses with School Plus program, which is mathematics, English, science, logical reasoning, communication skills, Vedic maths, and coding. So we do provide one-on-one -on -one online classes, CBSC, ICSC, IGCSE, and IB classes for grade two to twelve. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me, one-on-one -on -one preparation classes for international mathematics Olympiad uh, includes Sesmos, EMO. HKIMO, TIMO, Math Counts, US Common Core Math Competition, Math Kangaroo, and PRMO. So you can meet our rank holders for year 2021 and 22. They are kids like you only. So you also will be going to among one of them. So you can see these bright faces. So sooner your picture will be also going to come if you're going to score like them. Okay. 
So you can see the live Olympiad session includes group sessions with around 20 students delivered through Zoom tutors by our seasoned tutors. Session is three days per week. So days are Monday. Timings will be Monday, 8 p.m. till 9.15 p.m. Saturday, Sunday will be 2.30 to 3.45 p.m. With five minutes of break. And session will be for 35, 35 minutes, including five minutes of break. Okay. The session includes a mix of theory, practice, question papers, doubt sessions, and discussions on previous year papers. Students will get reading material and practice questions, which will be available on the dashboard of Olympiad Success. Students will get a free access to Olympiad Success platform to practice topic-wise mock test for both maths and reasoning to as logical reasoning constitutes 10, per, uh, 10 to 15 percent of the questions. The objective of this session is to provide introduction to the entire curriculum and give sufficient headway to the student compared to the, their peers. So syllabus, classes and fees details are over here. Syllabus is available at this particular link. All relevant links have been pasted in the chat box. No need to worry, will again be pasted in the chat box. So you can copy paste it from there. The fees for this course is 12,264 rupees. It is a 55 session course. So payment can be done uh, by on this link. The fees includes online classes, daily reading notes, and exercises, practice of previous year papers, access to Lompiad Success Platform for mathematics plus logical reasoning. There will be no refund. So what all you need for these all classes are just a laptop or desktop with good internet connection with a good camera quality and your headphones for better audio clarity. Preparation for Olympiad examination is a little tougher than the regular school curriculum, right? So as you all know, so hence students will be required to spend two hours every day to cope up in the curriculum. Okay, so parents' support will be needed to check answers and concepts, etc. So as these live classes are going to start from Monday, 8th of April, 2024. Okay, so soon I'm going to ask these questions. So make sure that you must have heard it clearly. So now I'll take you to the dashboard tour. <laughs> Sumidhi has raised her hand. Yes, Sumidhi. We'll, we'll take the queries later on, beta. Let me give a dashboard to her, okay? Then I'll take your query. Okay, so what you have to do is for dashboard, you have to just enter this URL, olympiadsuccess.com. Okay, so over here, you have to fill your correct user detail that you should log in properly. Make sure that you're filling a correct user details, otherwise you'll not be able to log in, okay? So the moment you enter these details, you'll get this personal detail page on your screen wherein you need to check your details, whether these are correct or if there is any error, you can rectify it over here and you can just click on update button for the updation, okay? So after this, what you have to do is, <clears throat> excuse me. So after this, you have to just click on live classes wherein you'll get your reading material, your question papers and your schedule and holiday calendar. Okay. So after clicking on live classes, you have to just select your subject for which specific subject you want to see your material. Okay. So I'm going to select science as well as topic. So you can see I got my reading material plus question papers. So for schedule, you have to just click it over here. You can, you'll get the schedule in schedule. You'll get to know in which session we're going to cover which specific topic. Okay. So it will be better clarity for you if you just check your schedule. So if you want to download this PDF, you want to keep it safe in your device. You have to just click over here, click here to download the PDF and you can keep this PDF safe in your device also. Okay. So later on that you can check offline also. So here is a holiday calendar. In holiday calendar, you'll get to know on which specific days you have your off, okay? So you should not take unnecessary leaves because already session is there three days a week. So here is a reading period you can see. There'll be set one. So each and every PDF is downloadable. What you have to do is you have to just click over here on this sentence, click here to download the PDF and you can download each and every PDF and you can keep it save in your device, okay? So you can see set two now. So you have a very good reading tail, right? A lot of reading tail is there for your reference. Now you can see set three. You can see set four. <clears throat> So now I'm showing you the question paper. What you have to do is you have to just click it over here. So you'll get a question paper. I, I'll advise you that you should download this question paper 
take out the printout then solve it okay and then check your answers later on don't take out your printout of your answer keys parallelly on the right hand side of the question paper there is an answer keys also okay so you have to just open it you can check it later on once you are done with the question paper you have solved it you want to tell your answers that whether you have done correct or wrong then you just open then you should open your answer keys so here is a set 2 so in question papers also you can see there is a lot of practice thing for you right so this is all about live classes in live classes you will get your reading material you will get your question papers and answer keys you get your schedule and your holiday calendar okay so what you have to do here is you have to just click on live classes you have to select uh, subject just, and topic uh, just a second i'm interrupting samriti yes, has sent me a direct message uh, she says that uh, ma'am i am a grade 9 student the wrong link has been shared with me uh samriti then you can leave the session with her that's okay if you are from grade 9 you can just leave the session you want to join in grade 9th one what you have to do is you just message me your mail id send me your mail id i'll just send you the grade 9th link okay you just send me directly on the name of pooja sud okay yeah sorry okay all right samriti you can leave the section bit i have copied your mail id all right everybody so uh, we are done with the live classes now i'm showing you the worksheet worksheet is also additional practice for you what you have to do is you have to just click over here in the worksheet you have to select your specific subject for which subject you want to see <coughs> and then you are good to go for the practice okay so for this you can just select the number also for how many worksheets you want to see so i want to attempt mock test paper number 1 so for attempt question where you have to click you have to just click on take exam After clicking on take exam, you will get the general instructions on your screen. So make sure that you read each and every instruction carefully. That you should not commit any mistake while attempting your worksheet. Okay. So after that, you have to just click on start worksheet, and then you are good to go. You can see there are so many questions in your worksheet. There are fifty number of questions. Okay. So make sure that you attempt each and every question with proper attention and carefully. Okay. So if I am done with the question one, I want to move on question two. What I have to do is I'll click on next. so suppose you are done with question 2 so each and every question you have to step forward for that you have to just click on next okay once you are done with all your questions where you have to submit your worksheet you have to just click on finish button but make sure that you should review all your questions before head the way we revise our paper while giving to our examiner okay in the main exam so that way only you have to just review all your questions that in case you find any error you can just rectify it before submitting okay so you can click yes i have reviewed all the question but make sure that you should submit your uh, worksheet otherwise you will not be able to see your performance okay this is a feedback page you can click it later on also you can give it there and then also so now you are done with the worksheet you want to see your performance where you have to go you have to just click on this performance button which is right after this worksheet button while clicking on performance button again you have to select your subject for which subject you want to see your performance so you can see over here I have attempted this worksheet just now, so I am going to click on View button. So for clicking on View button, after that I have attempted two questions. One is correct, one is wrong. Okay, so green is correct, red is wrong. So if you want to see that which answer is correct, which is wrong, so you have to just click on this Review button. While clicking on Review button, you will get to know your answers. Again, feedback page. So you want to give, you can give. Otherwise, you can click later on also. Okay, so you can see the correct answer, you can see the wrong answer also with the explanation. all right so that is all about your uh, worksheet your mock test paper your uh, reading material your question papers and your schedule okay so you have to just log out and you are good to go so this was all about dashboard if anybody is having any query related to the dashboard please feel free to drop it in the chat box i'll be happy to answer your queries anybody is having any doubt uh, i request everybody to please turn on your cameras heavy jain shivani kanish yog pujani how to find the username and password for dashboard if you have enrolled with us already you'll get password and username from our side have you enrolled somewhere 
If not yet, you should enroll first, okay? Then you'll get your username and password. Okay, you can just reconfirm it from your mother, okay? And then you can just contact on our support number, which I have already pasted in the chat box. I'll paste it again, okay? You, Pujani, my video is not working, okay? Anybody else is having any query related to the dashboard? If not, then I'll ask the questions. So, hurry up. If you have query, feel free to drop it in the chat box. And otherwise, we'll start with your demo. See, your mentor is waiting for you, and you also seem super excited for the demo, right? Yes, Heavy. Do you have any query? You're raising your hand. No. Okay. So, tell me uh, uh, on which days we do have classes. Quickly, let me see whether you have seen the PPT carefully or not. Monday, Saturday, Sunday. Very nice. Okay, very nice. Okay, what are the timings? Uh, Nivriti. Nivriti, that you can uh, see. We will be. This is the first batch. We will be coming up with the second batch also. So you can see your time convenience accordingly. Okay. <clears throat> For that, you need to just contact on support number. Tell me, tell me quickly. Okay. Monday, 8 to 9, 15. Said, oh, Saturday, Sunday is not free. What are the timings? Saturday, Sunday is not at 3. Tell me who knows what are the timings for Saturday and Sunday. Nivriti has done a correct answer for Saturday. Okay, Ashas, it's not 2. Saturday, Sunday timings are 2.30 to 3.45. Okay, Monday is fine, 8 to 9.15. Saturday, Sunday are 2.30 to 3.45. All right, everyone. So what all do you need for this? Which already you're using currently? Laptop or desktop with good internet connection. Okay. So are you all ready? Any doubt, any query or shall I hand over demo to your mentor that she should start interacting with you and she should start with the demo? Show me a thumbs up, hurry up quickly. If you all are okay to go ahead with the demo, show me a thumbs up on the screen. Some way is still thinking, Barry is still thinking, Adrian is still thinking. Shall I start with the demo? I think we are good to go, Usha, ma'am. All, all over to you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So, uh, I'll start with the demo. So, today I've thought to take up a topic of physics. So, I was thinking of starting off with force. Okay. Why I chose force? Why I chose force? I'll just give you a reason for that. Because the concept of force, first of all, you will uh, study it in class eight. And also, again, you have, you know, the same topic in classes nine also, but definitely the level is more different, right? So the topic that we will do in class eight is way, you know, I would not say uh, lesser, but yeah, in class ninth, it will be much more uh, significant or much more um, elaborate. Let's put it in this way, right? So today, before we start off with force, I just, you know, and I know that all of you are muted for today. That's completely okay. So basically, so when we talk about force, okay, what do we mean by force? Okay, before we even start off. So suppose you are sitting, you know, all of us are sitting. Uh, yeah, I'm sitting on a chair, right? Okay, if you don't do anything, if you don't touch me, you cannot move me, right? But if now suppose, uh, okay, Dharia uh, can attend the class on Saturday. Dharia, okay. I think, you know, uh, the support team will revert to it, Daria. Daria was my older student, by the way. So, uh, suppose I'm sitting on this chair. You cannot move me or I will not move until a force is applied. So, one of you come over to my place and you push me or you pull me, that is a force. So, simply put, a force is nothing but a push or a pull. Straightforward, very, very simple, a force is a push or a pull. Okay. So when one, suppose you're sitting on a chair or in a bed, I come and push you. That is a force. So force is anything which makes an object move. Makes a body or object move. Okay. 
So it can either make a body or object move. What else can it do? So if I'm pushing you, I'm making you to move. Suppose there is a football in the playground, right? So the football is, somebody has kicked the football. A football player has kicked the football. I want to stop the football. What do I do? I keep my leg on the football and actually stop it or I push it. So a force can also stop a moving body. When I mean stop, I mean that the body comes to rest. And move means the body is in motion. Absolutely correct, Tashas. I'm coming to that. Right. So two basic things a force can do. A force can actually make a body move or a force can also actually stop a body. Right. What else can a force do? A force, I'll do all this in details. Don't worry. Today it's a demo class just. So it can make an object move. It can make an object stop. And as, as Ashad said, you can change the direction of a moving body also. So while playing football in a ground, one of you is kicking the ball and another player kicks the ball, the entire direction changes. Fourth, force can change the shape. Best example, you take an eraser or a rubber which you have, okay, squeeze it. Or a soft ball, you squeeze the ball, the shape of the ball changes, right? So all of these things force can do. So force can make an object to move, a force can stop. Now, what else force can do? It can increase or decrease the speed of a body. What do you mean by speed? What is the meaning of speed? In physics, speed is equal to distance by time. And we define this as what? It is the rate of change of distance. Whenever I write rate of change, this rate of change means that denominator, this means that denominator will be time. Understood? So whenever I say rate of change of anything, which means that the denominator will be time. This what I write at the bottom, this is the denominator. And what I write on the top is the numerator. Everybody understood till here? Thumbs up because you can't, you know, unmute yourself today. Right? Everybody understood? So whenever I say rate of change of something, which means that it is denominator will be time. Right? Okay. Now force can also do something else. So what I have written five things force can do, right? There is another thing force can do, which I'm writing for you. It can change the size of an object. Let's write object. Object in physics, whenever I tell object or body, it is the same. So you are a body, you are an object, a football is a body, a football is an object. So anything that we are dealing with is an object or a body. Body does not mean human body. It means anything that we are dealing with. Clear? Okay. In case you have any questions, doubts, please feel free to type it in the chat window. I will try my best to answer whatever questions I can in this given time span. I'll try my best to answer everything. Done. Okay. Now. Before we go into anything else, I just need some white space. Yeah. Can force compress an object? Of course, yes, Shriyan. Compression is nothing but changing the shape. Yes, force can compress an object to answer your question. Now, 
whenever we talk about any physics, so physics is nothing but the study of physical quantities. What I'm teaching today is extremely basic concepts. Now, what are physical quantities? Physical quantities are quantities that you can measure. And why is it helpful to us if we can measure anything? Because if you measure objects, comparison is easier. And you understand well also. I'll give you examples from real life. Suppose now I tell you that I am fat. You don't know how fat I am, right? You have no idea of me. You're seeing me possibly for the first time, except for those who have seen me before. As soon as I say I'm 75 kgs, immediately you know that I'm really fat. So whenever we have a numerical value, it becomes easier for us to understand things. Right? So I say I'm 75 kilos. There he says he looks like 40 kilos. So immediately, you know, oh my God, she's double of my weight. Okay. I say I'm old and fat. You don't know how old I am. I say I'm 49 years. And you're like, oh my God, she's older than my mother. So as soon as we give a numerical value, you can understand things, compare quantities better. And physics is the study of physical quantities. So therefore, there's a lot of overlap between physics, chemistry, and maths. Physics requires mathematics. Class 8, little. Class 9, little bit more. Class 10, more. And class 11 and 12, lots more. Okay. And by mathematics, I don't mean real hi-fi stuff, like the basic concepts. Whenever I see I require need something, I will explain that to you in the class. Understood till now? Everybody? Clear? Everybody is comfortable with English? Am I going okay? I'm not fast or something, right? Okay. Now, so I told you physics is the study of physical quantities. Okay. So we have three fundamental physical quantities. This is basic physics, which I'm teaching you. And you will study this not only in class eight, in class nine, in class 10, 11, 12, this concept remains the same. So we have three basic physical quantities and what are they? First is mass, second is length, and third is time. So mass, length, and time, these are the fundamental or the basic physical quantities that we have. Right. The rest, all quantities, for example, force, weight, pressure, speed, velocity, all of them are what we call as derived quantities. Derived quantities means you can derive them from the fundamental quantities. Okay, so mass, length, and time are the basic fundamental physical quantities. Understood? Okay. Now, whenever we study a quantity or a physical quantity, we have two things that we use. First is the numerical value. And second is what we call as unit of measurement. Some books also write it in short as, I say my mass is 75 kgs. So 75 is my numerical value and kg is the unit of measurement. I say I'm 49 years. So 49 is my numerical value and years is the unit of measurement. Right? Understood till here, everybody? Any questions, doubts, please, you know, type them in the chat window. I'll try my best to answer it today. Right? So every physical quantity will have a numerical value and a unit of measurement. 
can somebody tell me you know what do, do, do not have a unit of measurement anything or anything which does not have a unit of measurement anybody i am sure you have done it in maths so ratio do not have unit of measurement a ratio is nothing but one number divided by another number both having the same unit of measurement okay so a ratio does not have any unit of measurement why because both of them actually cancel each other okay any questions doubts feel please type it in the chat window in the classes it's all interactive and you can ask any number of questions you want and all that no problems done so shriya and pragna nivitri dharya anvita okay now so we have two units so one is known as scalar unit sorry 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 physical quantities are of two types one you have scalar quantities and second we have vector quantities when we do the live classes i will be explaining all of this in details this is like a very you know brief kind of explanation the demo is short right i am hardly getting 45 minutes so for this short time we have two types of physical quantities scalar and vector you have to know the difference so scalar quantities they have or they need only magnitude okay magnitude means numerical value means a number okay and vector quantities need or have both magnitude and direction if you don't know this write it down i'll wait for some time examples are time mass length acha then we have uh, here examples are speed here we have weight here we have velocity distance is a scalar displacement is a vector force acceleration etc if you don't know this write this down so difference between scalar and vector quantities basic concept of physics you should know this very very well okay done understood wrote everybody those who don't know this please write basic these are concepts yeah, i can see some message in the chat window okay yeah Just tell me when you are done. I can see children writing, so I'm waiting for you. Done. Okay. Now, so we have units of measurement. 
why is speed a scalar quantity but displacement is a vector quantity yeah so speed is the rate of change of distance uh, this was this question has been asked by uh, shriyan right so shriyan speed is the rate of change of distance right so what does this mean this is distance divided by time okay now distance is what distance is the shortest length between the starting position and the ending position or the ending point distance is a scalar quantity there is no use of dire direction here however displacement is the shortest distance between two points i'll give you an example let's say this is your home and this is your school if you take a cycle to school or your father drops you pakka he will take this you know route so this is your home and this is your school so distance so this shortest distance is known as the distance or the shortest path if you are going by a school bus okay this is home one your friends home is here home two your another friends home is here home three another friends home is here home four so the school bus has to pick up all the children so the school bus will possibly go in this direction so which means that this the distance traveled by the school bus is from a to b to c to d to e whereas the displacement of the school bus is nothing but a to e so displacement has a direction a to e is the displacement and therefore displacement is a vector quantity so whenever we talk about displacement we have to specify the direction displacement is the shortest distance from the starting position to the ending position shriyan okay now i will ask you a question shriyan understood everybody else also suppose i write velocity is the rate of change of displacement you will tell me is velocity a scalar quantity or a vector quantity so which means velocity is equal to very good adrian displacement by time since displacement is a vector quantity velocity is also a vector quantity very good all of you those who have answered i can see dharya asha sambed shriyan okay and the rest of you also right units of measurement so we have three units of measurement first is the si system also known as the international system of units then we have the cgs system and last we have the fps system of unit what is this so in the si system the unit of length is meter denoted by small f the unit of mass is kilogram if you don't know this please write it down kg and the unit of time is second this is also known as the mks system m for meter k for kilogram s for second similarly in the cgs system 
What is the unit of length? Centimeter, mass in gram, and time in second. So CGS ka full form is centimeter, gram, second. FPS length is foot. The unit of foot is what? FT. Mass is pound. This is not the pound that you use, you know. LB is the short form for pound. This pound and the currency pound is different and time in seconds. So it is foot, pound, second. Now, one of you, anybody, or you drop a message in the chat window. Can you tell me where today, you know, even today in India, foot, pound, FPA system is used somewhere? Where? My question is, yes, correct, Daria. My question was, where in, the, where in India, even today, FPA system is used? So, yes, that's correct. Whenever you buy a cake, you buy a one pound cake, two pound cake, three pound cake. You know, what is the story behind it? So, cake was, it was not invented in India. We did not have cakes, right? So, for Indian context, typically you have kheer and halwa and laddu. So, cake was brought into India by the Britishers. So, FPA system typically was used in British India when British ruled India. So, because cake came from the British, even today cake is measured in pounds. But all over the world, SI unit or the international system of units is used as a worldwide accepted system of units. So, whether you study in India or in USA or in UK or in Honolulu or in Hawaii, everywhere the unit of length is meter, mass is kg and time is second. Okay, understood everybody? Basics of physics, these are, right? We are doing force, right? What did you wrote at the uh, CGS system, Asha's? Acha, mass, C, Asha's, CGS system, mass is grams. Can you keep the measurement, please? I am writing, okay, sorry. I am just keeping back the screen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ashas, it's grams. Yeah. Samved, okay. This is gram. No issues, no issues. Tell me when you are done. Done everybody, some way done. Just show me your finger or something, you know. Thumbs up, some way. Or drop a message, I'll not know. Is CGS mass gram? Yes, some way mass is gram. Okay, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. It's gram. CGS, the mass is gram. What is FPS length? Some way the FPS length is foot. F O O T, foot. Mass is pound and time is seconds.
Done? Okay, very good. Now, we are talking about force, right? As of now, just know this, that force is a vector quantity. So force has both magnitude and direction. Okay, so direction becomes very important. Now, suppose this is a book resting on, say, a floor or a table or whatever. Okay, you are standing here and your friend is standing here. Both of you are pushing the book. Pushing is a force. Suppose the SI unit of force is Newton, capital N. And what is the CGS unit of force? It is dime. I will tell the relation between both of them when I do it in the class. As of now, just know this, that the SI unit of force is Newton. Suppose this force is 5 Newton and both, say A is exerting 5 Newton force, B is exerting 5 Newton force. We have something called the total force. It is not actually called the total force. It is called the resultant force or the net force. So that is nothing but 5 minus 5, 0, which means that the object will not move. Correct, Shriya. So if the resultant of the forces is 0, and why did we subtract? We subtracted because the force are acting in opposite direction. If it is in the same direction, we will add. I'll show you many more examples like this. Just tell me when you're done. Correct. The book or the object or the body does not move because the resultant force is zero. So whenever the resultant force on any object is zero, that object will not move. It is stable. Okay? Done? So I'm writing it here. So if resultant force acting on an object is zero, The object will not move. Done? Okay, Anvita has a question. Uh, Ma'am, so if the force is applied on the same side, we should add then, okay? Yeah, that's what I was coming to, Anvita. I will show you a case like that. So, let's say this is an object. This is the force F1, say 5 Newton. F2, 10 Newton. F3, 15 Newton. Question is, calculate the resultant force. So, on this side... Total force is F1 plus F2, 5 plus 10, 15 Newton. So therefore, resultant force is 15 minus 15, 0. So the object will not move. This is case number 2. The previous one was case number 1. Understood? 
Anvita, does this explain your question? Right? Now, I'll give you one case. You will tell me the resultant. Okay. So, this is F1, 15 Newton, F2, say 12 Newton, F3, 2 Newton, F4, 5 Newton. Calculate the direction, calculate the resultant force and tell me in which direction the object, at a case 1. Okay, case 1 was, suppose you have this, 5 Newton and 5 Newton. So, somebody who texted, okay, uh, uh, Srinisha. Srinisha, you said case 1, right? So, this was case 1. So, the resultant force in this case is 5 minus 5, 0. So, which means that the body will not move. Srinisha, is this okay? Did you understand case 1? So, which means if two equal and opposite forces are acting on a body, the body will not move. Now, my question was this. What was the force? Somebody tell me 15 and 12. And this was 2 and 3. So, what is the resultant force and in which direction the force will? 2 and 3 or 5? five uh, so, I forgot. I just gave random numbers. Five. So, five Newton. So, the resultant force here is 15 plus 12. That is 27 Newton. So, therefore, the resultant force or the net force here is 27 minus. So, this means that the object will move to the right and with a force of 20 Newton. Now, can you understand? You know, tug of war game, right? It is nothing but, you know, equal. If, if the forces are equal, then the rope will not move in any direction. But if on one side you have really strong people with exerting more force, the rope will move in that way. So, tug of war is nothing but a example of forces acting on an object. Understood? So, net net, if they move in opposite direction, you will subtract, write this somewhere. And if they move in the same direction, you will add the forces. Right. As you must have noticed by now, I use a lot of board work. I don't read slide slides. I have a lot of board work going on. So the slides are only for information not to be read out. You have to understand. Behind people will push and front people will pull. So we will add, yeah. Done? Okay. Now let's go to where we had stopped. Lot of things I told you. So I told you that this our unit of force is Newton. And I also told you that the CGS unit of force is dive. Normally, whenever I do something, I will tell you both the SI unit and the CGS unit. Normally, we use only the SI unit, but then you should know the now you can ask me, why didn't you tell the FPS unit? The FPS unit of force is known as poundal. But this is almost like, you know, non-existent now. Nobody uses it. 
poundal is nothing but pound per second. Okay. Clear till here. All this we have done. I hope now you can see. I will not read to the slide. So what force can do, we are done. Okay, this I was saying. So mostly more than one force acts on an object and the total force is also known as the net force or the resultant force. Or you can write total force also, it's okay. So the net force will determine an object moves and in which direction. So if the forces are in the same direction, you will add opposite direction you will subtract. These are actually arrows. So there are two forces acting on the object and therefore the total force is 5 plus 5, 10 Newton. Total force, net force, resultant force, whatever you call it, meaning is the same. So if they are in the same direction, you will add it. If they are in the opposite direction, you will subtract. So if the forces are in the opposite direction, so this, so this what happens, then the resultant force is 10 minus 5, 5 Newton and in the direction towards the right. So if they're opposite direction, you will subtract. And force is a vector quantity because direction plays a very important role in the concept of force. Clear till now? Understood everybody? Just a second. I will show you one question if I... Okay. Let me see. I will I'll do one question with you which comes a lot in the Olympiads. Just give me a minute. Okay, <clears throat> when three forces of 50 Newton, 30 Newton and 50 Newton act on a body in the same direction, then the body you calculate the resultant force of the body and tell me, you know, in which direction it will move. I just picked up one random question from the Olympiad papers. Yeah. So basically, the resultant force of the body is 30 plus. So resultant force 50 plus 30 plus 50 so 95 Newton and the body will move in the direction of the forces. Clear everybody? Okay. Now, force is equal to mass into acceleration. What is the meaning of this? The formula of force is force is equal to mass into acceleration. What is mass? The quantity of matter
present in our body is mass. What is weight? Mass is a scalar quantity. Write this down and the SI unit of mass is kg. On the other hand, what is weight? Weight is a force that the earth extends on an object and pulls it towards itself. And the formula of weight is mass into acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity depends upon the planet that you are. So W is equal to, I'm writing here, G on Earth is 9.8 meter per second square. Lot of information I'm giving you. So when you're preparing for the Olympiads, your preparation level should be a little bit of higher. Okay, I can see a few questions. Okay, okay, these are not the questions here. So weight, the SI unit of weight is actually, you know what, Newton. Most people make a mistake telling it. So I'm writing here, SI unit of weight is Newton. Weight is a force. So when I say I'm 75 kilos, very casually we say I weigh 75 kilos, but that is actually the mass. <clears throat> Please read the definition of weight once, okay? Nivriti, weight is a force that the earth extends on an object and pulls it towards itself. The earth, you know, attracts every object with a force and that is known as the weight. Weight is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity. Nivriti, is it okay? <clears throat> shoes. Tell me when all of you have finished writing. All of these concepts and details I will tell you when you are. Can you say the weight formula once? Okay, I'm writing it down here again. Uh, I'm writing here, okay. Weight is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity. I'm just rubbing this here so it becomes clear. I'm not yet finished, Shriyan. I'll tell you a few more things. Okay, acceleration. I wrote in short. Oh, don't let me not write in short. Due to gravity on the earth, denoted by small g, 9.8 meter per second square. This you have to know. And on the moon, what is the acceleration due to gravity on the moon? 
it is one four one sixth times the acceleration due to gravity on the earth so tell me something some all of you if on the earth i weigh 60 kgs how much will i weigh on the moon absolutely correct 10 kgs there is a joke if you are heavy you are actually on you are on the law wrong planet done so yes the acceleration due to gravity depends upon which you know planet you are in okay understood the difference between mass and weight all of you so let's say i have a question the mass of the body is 60 kgs Calculate its weight if acceleration due to gravity is given as 10 meter per second square. Normally, some books round it off to 10 meter. So, we know that weight is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity. And here, mass is equal to 60 kgs. So therefore, weight is equal to 60 into 10. The answer is 600 Newton. Newton is the unit of weight. Okay, correct. Swinisha, correct. I got your it's a typo. Okay, correct. Right? Okay. Any questions, any doubts? Did you understand what I was doing? This is just a demo. I tried my best to cover as much as possible in the demo, but this is a very... Normally in the class, this chapter, force and pressure, takes around four to five classes. Lots of other things. We'll do Newton's laws. We'll do equations of motion. So loads of things. Just to give you we just, any questions, any doubts, we just have one more minute. Any questions, any doubts, you want to ask me anything? No doubt. Did you understand? How many of you have been in classes with me before, earlier? There you are, I know. Anybody else have you been in class? What is displacement? Okay. Displacement is the shortest distance. Oh, Ashas, you're much younger. Between the starting point and the ending point. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, uh, I will advise that you follow the Lakmir Singh's book. So the book that we follow is the Lakmir Singh's book. Most schools follow the NCRT book, but I normally follow the Lakmir Singh's book. So before we stop, I just want to ask you, how was the demo? How was the demo? Did you find it interesting? Okay. Boring, terrible, horrible. How was the demo? I look forward to all of you in the classes. And if you have any issues regarding the time, I would I have I have passed the information onto the team, but definitely you also drop a message. And I'm sure I want maximum of you in my class. So I'm okay if the time is moved to some other time or something. Okay. So before we close, thank you so much, all of you, for being here.
Thank you so much and good night. Thank you, Ashas. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye.